Hey guys, okay, so this is my quick little Sibelius um, scanning sheet music tutorial for those of you that want to know. So um, Sibelius, when you download it, comes with a free app uh, version called Photoscore Lite. Um, there's actually a full version you can buy called Photoscore Ultimate, um, which has a lot more features, but for today um, and for our purposes, really Photoscore Lite is pretty easy. Um, and has, you know, all the basic stuff that you need to import scores um, to make tracks like we need to do if you're a bad piano player like I am. So we're going to open up Photoscore Lite. And up here in the corner, you'll see a button that says Open PDF. So we're going to select that. And I'm going to go to my desktop and uh, select one of the songs that my advanced women's choir is singing called Hotaru Koi and open it up. Um, so when you open up a file, it's gonna ask about the resolution. So basically, you know, is it really grainy? Um, is it a bad copy kind of a thing? Um, is it a high quality? So if you're not sure what these numbers are, um, basically it's just asking you for the quality of the PDF. So mine's pretty good. I usually um, scan things at 300 DPA eyes to make sure that they're readable. So I'm gonna open it up and then it's gonna ask you how many pages you need. Um, scanned. So uh, for example if you download something from Pepper and it has like translations and that kind of stuff um, you can leave that last page off or whatever. Um, but mine is um, full of music so I don't need to change any pages. So I'm going to hit OK. And now it's going to start opening and converting um, all of the pages in my PDF. And you'll see them uh, start showing up over here on the left hand corner and it's going to start processing each page and you can see the first page already pops up for us to start jumping into um, but we want to wait until all the pages have been uh, processed um, just so that way we're not the pages aren't freaking out over here while the machine is working so now we have everything down here on our scores um, and that have been checked and everything and we're just going to kind of go through um, line by line and make sure it's good and you'll notice that um, when I highlight a certain staff line up here on the top it shows that staff line that I'm working on and it even like highlights it in purple there you see um, about which note um, so it's very very intuitive and reads the um, the sheet music very well um, unless it's a really bad copy or if I have you know something poorly scanned um, then it's uh, it's not going to read it as well and you'll have to make a lot of um, changes and fixes um, but those are pretty easy to do um, depending on the quality of the scan so I'm just going to go through each line and um, you'll notice so um, each staff line um, is notated and if I went over here to look you can always check like what it's scanned so each one of these purple lines is just it identifying where the music is and you'll see how it's all connected they break up the systems um, intuitively and uh, it's really really easy to use so I'm just going to kind of skim through this and make sure everything is correct and um, if I want to I can select the staff and um, edit that rename it um, and actually choose a uh, different thing so if I you know if this was a keyboard or a piano or whatever I could say okay this is the piano staff um, and uh, rename it as that and then it will be that um, for every single measure um, and it even groups up things which is really nice um, when you have you know um, a full piano staff um, grand staff I should say uh, to adjust the volume and stuff later it moves both of them at the same time instead of just having to do it one by one so um, just looking through everything seems to be in order here so I'm going to go on to the next page by using this arrow button here at the top and so it'll say page two of six and again I'm just trying to glance through it make sure um, that all the notes are correctly inputted sometimes you'll see like slight you know things that are off or like a note here is missing especially if you have a cluster chord or things like that but this one is pretty straightforward and then oh here so we have a little bit of an issue we have an extra quarter notes is what it's saying um, so we're just looking at some of the uh, different notes and if you'll notice um, there's uh, two voices that we split into it's kind of just like finale where it splits up the different voice parts if it needs to if there's um, some different timing issues so uh, for down here we see that um, right here for these two notes is what's really throwing us off because it thinks that it's in part one and so we think it's it's thinking that we have one two and three four five and and so we're just going to switch those to the second 
voicing, which will take care of that and fix it. So now it realizes, oh no, this is actually beat four and everything's fine. Okay, so moving on and then, oh see, we have the same problem here. So usually if you know you have a passage that's gonna be repeated like that, probably just kind of go through and look for that and just make the simple adjustment by selecting the notes. Um, you can also move them up or down if they're in the wrong place, that kind of thing. Um, so it's really intuitive makes it really easy and um, I'm just gonna go through real quick and uh, change up some of these things so you notice like oh see it read the sforzandos as eighth rest for some reason so I'm just gonna delete those and that's gonna help fix things here same thing there so everything's good now looks like mm -hmm -hmm. Double checking and uh, ties and slurs, that's one of the things you want to make sure. So you see like we have some ties here for some reason, which should not be there. Um, and then this one, you want to make sure the voicing sometimes match. Uh, so we're going from this half note over here to this half note here, and it's both in uh, voice two because it's green. So those will connect and make that connection properly when we hear them later. Again, some of these things you don't need to delete if they're you know not going to affect the sound quality. Um, really, I'm just looking at these as, is it going to play correctly? Because we're not using it, obviously we have real sheet music, we're not going to be uh, using th this as a score necessarily. Um, and if you are, then you want to make those adjustments. But for me, I'm just getting them to be played. So. As long as I know it's gonna sound correct, then I'm not gonna worry too much about how it looks. Even though sometimes my OCD, it gets bothered by that. Okay, looks like those chords are good. Just going through line by line again, and this is, um, you get faster and faster at it. Um, the more you do it, um, just, you know, basically rolling your eye over it and checking. And um, even if you miss something, uh, it's, it will easily point things out um, that you're missing or that have a problem, which is really nice. And you can kind of go through it later when you can actually play the track, which I suggest you do before you start you know, making tracks for your students. Just listen to the thing as a whole because um, sometimes our ears pick up on, hey, that chord doesn't sound right. And then you'll notice like, oh yeah, they, it did something weird here where it read the song wrong and you can easily go through and figure out what measure it is and fix it really quickly. So that's what I like about it. All right, looks like everything is pretty much good to go. This is a pretty simple song. There's no crazy rhythms or anything. Um, sometimes it has trouble with like mixed meter, for example, um, where it might like, you know, ha it, it'll tell you a whole measure, you know, this whole measure is wrong, but it's really just, you know, it's missing the time signature. So you just right click and you can add things like a new key signature, time signature if it's missing, text, um, rests, bar lines, you can change them. Um, again, if you're really picky about what you want to see, but I'm not going to see this, so it's not going to be a big deal for me. All right, so I've gone through everything, and um, one of the things I wanted to point out is that if you have something that's wrong, so let's say I'm going to make this a dotted quarter rest, so which is incorrect, when I go to send to Sibelius, which is up here on the top, it's going to tell you if there's any issues and that you missed. So sometimes there are, and it's like, oh, these are the pages affected, and it says, would you like to continue, it? continue anyway? Now sometimes with things like um, if there's like a duple um, uh, or you know something uh, where the, this um, basic software isn't going to recognize it um, like the ultimate version is, um, then you know you can't fix it really in here. You have to go into Sibelius and fix it. So there's things that you'll just say, yeah, it's okay, I'm going to fix it in Sibelius. Um, but otherwise you go back and go, oh, okay, page six. So I'll go to page six. Oh, look at, yeah, look, at, I totally missed that. So I'm going to change it back and now it's correct. So now when I go to send to Sibelius, it's going to open up Sibelius for me, and it's just going to basically import the whole PDF that I just went through and checked and organized. And it's going to ask you if you want to you know if it's transposing, um, to use the, what instruments you want to use. And I just say let Sibelius choose, which is usually it's um, keyboard sounds, so piano sounds are what it does. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to open in Sibelius. So we see the song here, 
now is going to go. And if I go to the play feature, I'm going to hit play, but first I need to know what tempo this song is at. So if I go back to my original, um, I'm going to see that uh, we're at uh, quarter note equals 152 for our tempo marking. So I'm going to go to the text bar and here and select metronome mark. Just click somewhere on the first measure. I'm going to say that quarter note equals 152 so it knows how fast to play. And, um, and when you're making tracks for your students, you might want to, um, you know, slow this down for them, which you can just write in a different number and it will play slower or faster depending on what number you choose um, to have them practice it with a little more ease if it's a complicated, fast song. So now I'm just going to go ahead and play and we'll see. Okay, and normally I would play through the whole song, make sure there's no issues um, that I just, you know, I missed um, in the translation process. And then if I hit M, it brings up the mixer, and this is where we create the actual tracks um, and how we can manipulate the sound. So I usually take the master all the way up to that six decibels, and now we can begin to kind of manipulate the sound. So normally, um, you know, the click, don't worry about that, that's usually off, but if you want the uh, metronome playing, if that helps, you know, if you're working on a really complicated rhythm piece or something like that and you want the click in there, you can add that in. But usually it doesn't make a sound. So um, here and it says piano, because I've labeled that. I went back to, um, uh, in PhotoScore, remember when I changed the piano to piano, so now it's telling me which track is which, and then you could name them if you wanted to like that, so um, it makes it a little bit clearer if you have multiple voices um, but so now you can play with the volume right here on the mixer so I'm gonna turn this volume all the way down for the piano track because really it's just you know helping the students um, hear what the the piece sounds like as a whole this is that one of those you know piano for rehearsal only um, and then I can start manipulating all the different voice parts I can even do it while I'm playing it so and we can hear it, the alto part is the loudest So it's really nice um, to make those adjustments and basically um, you can figure out, you know, how loud do you want the other parts, how loud do you want the piano, um, you know, normally, again, this would be the full track of pianos um, or piano uh, to um, adjust for your voices. And so you can say, okay, here, I'm going to make the soprano one part um, really loud and everything else is going to be, you know, on the medium side because I don't necessarily want it to be by itself or maybe you do want it to be by yourself and so you're going to take that volume all the way down to zero. Um, it's really up to you to kind of mess with it and decide, you know, um, which part you want to be louder. And if you know, like, oh, yeah, my sopranos are good, but my altos, you know, they need a little extra help, um, you know, with whatever. You can adjust that and um, make the tracks really unique for your, your needs. Um, so let's say I need the alto track, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit play again. I'm going to go back to the beginning, hit play again. And, yeah, that's... That's probably about the right sound uh, volume that I need. So I'm going to go up here to File now to actually make the track, and I'm going to hit Export. Okay, and if I had saved this, um, which I will in just a second, it would say the right name. All right, and I'm going to put underscore alto. And I'm going to save it to my desktop so I know where it is, make it a little bit easy on myself. So now I have the file name Hotaru Koi Alto, and I'm going to save it to the export, the desktop, and I'm going to hit export on the bottom here. So now it's going to transfer that song over, and as you'll see, here it is on my desktop as the alto part, and if I hit play, So the alto part is the loudest there, um, and you can mix it up. Usually I make a track that's um, you know piano only. I make tracks for each voice part, and then um, if needed, I'll make tracks for um, the group as a whole, so just so they can you know practice basically as if everybody was singing along with them um, to hear what the, the piece is supposed to sound like. 
So I hope that helps, guys, um, and let me know if I can clarify anything further. Thanks.